look, there's a lot of weird stuff about the Bob Lazar story. A lot of weird stuff about it. And the, 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 the one that sticks in my mind, and I know this probably shouldn't because it's possible to do, is that it's been consistent. His story's been absolutely consistent since the late 1980s. Now, that's yeah. possible to develop a narrative, and if you're disciplined, and he's obviously very intelligent, you could just, like, craft the longest con the world has ever known and make no money from it and turn your life upside down and have the feds search your property, which they did. Doesn't on, make a lot of video. sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If they thought that he really was in possession of Element 115 and that there really is uh, a stable version of this element that we discovered in a particle collider, or we, we accurately, they predicted it and then proved it to be real in a particle collider. But that wasn't until like the, the 2000s. When was it like when they, I want to say, was it like 2011 when they uh, officially discovered particle 115? Or element 115. But this element, he said, was stable wherever these beings are from. And they use it to propel their craft through uh, a means of bypassing normal propulsion systems with some insanely sophisticated method where they can pick points in space and they essentially just instantaneously traverse these points in space. I brought a photograph with me. Of course, I left it in the other room, but I'll bring it out at some point. And it was a guy named James Kibble. He's Australian. And it's about uh, 19, it's April 1966. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I did uh, a segment on a landing case that happened at Westall in 1966, which is a suburb, Westall Primary School, which is a suburb of Melbourne. Shane Ryan did a film on it. I just covered a section of it in the phenomenon. And during my time in Australia, I'd heard about this guy, Jim Kibble, James Kibble, that shot a Polaroid of a disc a couple of kilometers away two days prior to the landing at the school. A lot of times when you have sightings, mass sightings like that, they're in and around the area for several days. So it's very likely that those two are connected. My point is this. According to James Kibble, and he's in the film, he said the disc was kind of c coming down like this over his garden. And he had his Polaroid camera. He was going to take pictures of. Were well, you doing the same wobbling kind yeah, of motion he said this with kind your of, hand? I'm just telling like, you what he told me. Yeah, okay. he said it was kind of wobbling down like a leaf, kind of. Mm. And then uh, he was like, "Holy shit!" And he grabbed his uh, Polaroid camera and he said he did it so quickly, he smashed it in his face and he split his nose open. But he snapped one shot and he said what it did was, is it went like this, which Turned I had sideways. The, the photograph that I have shows it sideways, and I'll show it to you. I've got it. I scanned it from the original. Polaroid, and then it shot off at an unbelievable rate of ski speed, according to him. Exactly how Lazar that's, describes how these things that's, work. That's exactly my point. And when I interviewed all the children, now adults, that watched this thing land at this Westall Primary School in 1966, they said the same thing. It was sitting on the ground. They got up to, I think, around 10 feet away from it, which is pretty remarkable. When you talk to witnesses, especially... That many witnesses? I mean, there were roughly 300 kids, I didn't meet all 300 of them, in the playground when this happened, and including the science teacher, this guy Greenwood, which I got him on camera for the first time in history and the phenomenon. And they said it got off the ground, and then it went like this. It turned like this. Turned and, sideways again. And then it shot off at a high rate. It's in the movie. You can hear all the testimonies. It's the same thing. Yes. And I got a photograph of it like this. I'll and show no it sound. You. And no sound. A slight humming. Or buzzing sound. This is 1966. So, and I'm going to get to this later, but we can go back to moment of contact. But I'm going to make the argument that some, and I cannot emphasize how many times we need to underline the word some, UFOs, UAP, originate from a non-human intelligence. And I'll start off in 45, and I'll take us up to modern day. Okay. Well, just a handful of cases that I am... I have personally investigated. I have personally met the witnesses, gone to their houses, dating back to 45, 47, 52, 57, 55, 60s, 64, like all these cases, okay? So basically what I'm going to do is we all know, we know that the vast majority of these cases can be explained in conventional terms. All this noise about Chinese balloons and uh, weather balloons, and that's all noise. It's obfuscation and noise. Yeah, we know that all that stuff exists. 
But what about the core 5 or 10% of cases? And I'm going to give you some samples today that truly, after extensive and exhaustive investigation, not because of a lack of data, that, that defy a conventional explanation, and those are the cases that I'll share with you today when we're ready. But we can go back to moment of contact Don't, if you want. Let's go right into it. Oh, you want to go right I'm into so it? I'm so excited. All right. All you right. got let's, me so let's, pumped let's, up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Here it is. Um, right. Oh, you got it. That's the photo. You got it. That's the photo. I got a much Whoa. better copy uh, outside. But see the way it turns sideways? Now, let me tell you, if you ever see a photograph of a UFO, and I've talked to NASA analysis about this, and it has a clearly defined edge, it's probably a fake. They somehow, they have something to do with a, it, it's blurred around the edges. They don't get, they can't get a crisp photograph of a photograph. They think it has something to, to do with the propulsion. But again, that's not me saying this. That makes just, sense. Yeah. If there's some sort of a field around it. I have a much better copy in, outside. But yeah, this is, gives you an example. You have a much better copy than this? I do. I scanned it from the original. It's in my bag. Go yeah. get the bag, Should bro. I go get it? Go get the right, bag. I'll go get it right now. Crazy. Sorry. Get the bag, man. Oh, it's right there. Oh, Exciting. Sorry about that. Keep I that up on the outside. screen, please, Jamie. Can <laughs> okay. I see the full, f the full, uh, how it's... Uh, okay, here it is. Look at this. God, it's oddly centered. This is... It's perfect. Sent to me, this is sent to me by mm -hmm. the guy who shot the Polaroid, okay? There's his handwriting. This came from Australia. Mm -hmm. Boom. Here it is. Check it out. And see the way it's sideways like that? Yeah. I'm going to put on my old man glasses. Yeah, I know, right? I got mine, too. <laughs> And we can get into, we can get into my argument that I'm going to put forth as if I'm presenting a case to a jury. See, my, my number one problem always with these things is that I want it to be true so bad yeah. that I worry that my rational, logical mind ignores all don't, the possibilities of, of it being bullshit. Don't look at any one particular case. What you have to do... I mean, I'm looking at it like this, this photo. That, that, that's does, that's does, pretty good. That's the same one. That's the same yeah. photo. So, does that look you, like you, you got to look at it like <laughs> that. <laughs> I have to do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feels yeah. similar, bro. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. a bell. It's a school yeah. bell. Time's up, bitches. That's what they're telling they're, <laughs> That's what it tells us. So, Time's up, humans. Which you can't base this stuff it's on any bell, one... James. He proved it. <laughs> it's over. You can't base... It up. Jamie, Jamie's on the case. Hey, all I could take, all I could say is that you talk to the witnesses. I think if you picked it up, there's a hamburger underneath it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think. It's like a fancy restaurant hamburger. Monsieur, Here's your meal, sir. Monsieur, it is waffle thin. <laughs> you know the kind where they don't put the the bun together. You got to do it together yourself. The, but, the burgers just sitting there. But you you, you can't. You look at the preponderance of eyewitness testimony from around the world, right? You yeah. don't look at any one particular case.